Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So apparently, according to YouTube, this is my thousandth video. I thought that was kind of cool. I thought I would share that. It really doesn't mean a whole lot, but it is interesting that that's a milestone being crossed. But Nevertheless, we have to talk about the state of the race. We have to give an update about the 2024 election because there's been a few shakeups this week and we've covered that. We covered Donald Trump's stance on the issue of abortion and Biden's campaign really struggling to really try and tie him to some of these like state bans in an attempt to try and drum up some enthusiasm among his base. And we're going to be talking about why it's not really working for Biden. And the polls do show a very tight race nationally. That is true. It's important to note that Trump usually outperforms polling. It's important to note that Donald Trump never led the popular vote except for like five days in both the 2016 and 2020 election cycles. But he has led for over seven months. And while it is true that it's possible Biden could take the lead in RCP, what matters are the swing states. The national popular vote doesn't exactly matter, as we know from Hillary Clinton in 2016, Al Gore in 2000. But Trump is up in every single swing state except for the state of Pennsylvania, which is also true. And that's largely because of an outlier poll. And while it is true that there is a lot of work to be done, this is not an election that's even close to being over, anybody who is acting complacent is doing everybody in the country a major disservice. It shows that Biden is in a tough spot. And here's the deal. He's an incumbent president. Donald Trump has been indicted four times. It's possible he even gets convicted before the election. But his numbers have risen because Biden has been so awful he has nothing to run on. He has nothing to run on. And that is why he's trying to milk the abortion thing so much, because he has no other possible issue that he can really run on. And you want to look at this right here. We found this poll, and we're probably going to get more polling on this topic next week when the new round of polls get released. But still, look at this. When it comes down to how people view this issue, Trump saying, leave it up to the states, that's not exactly a third rail. He's avoiding a national ban, which some people are upset with. I understand why they're upset with it, but it is electoral suicide. If Donald Trump comes out in favor of a national ban, you're going to see him lose. The border is going to be wide open. Republicans are probably never going to win an election ever again if you give amnesty to a lot of these people. Roe v. Wade gets codified. The courts get stacked. You don't want to sit this one out. I do tell people that whether they think some of Trump's rhetoric is a little weak or whatever, if you are pro-life and you want to see abortion ended, Donald Trump is the only option to vote for this November. But still, 39% of people in this poll believe it should be left up to the states. Only 45% say it should be decided nationally. And it's interesting to see how the numbers have moved, but Donald Trump's position is a pretty middle ground, and he can go on offense on late-term abortion against Biden. If anything, win on that. You know, he's kind of distancing himself from some of these state bans, and if your only issue that you're running on is, I'm going to tie Trump to this issue, I'm going to lie about Trump's position on it, you're backed into a corner. It's a risky strategy. It's a Hail Mary strategy. And it's not exactly something that I believe is going to work out well for Joe Biden. Is it the best thing he can do? Maybe. But at the end of the day, it's really just indicative of how tough of a spot he's in. You look at the economy. He's down by 18 points on the economy. He's trying to say the economy is getting better. You see inflation rising again. Wages were flat last month. Gas prices are going up. And this is not a good look for Joe Biden and the economy. It's true. Donald Trump is somebody, when people think of Donald Trump and they think of his presidency, the one thing that even a lot of people who did not support him but had five brain cells could indicate is he was really good 
on the economy. And if COVID never happened, he would have won the election very easily, even though some of the polls showed him down at the time. When crunch time kicked in, the economy would have bailed Trump out and then some. And that we know. Foreign policy, foreign affairs are a complete mess. And we have all these conflicts that probably would not be happening right now if Trump was in office. It's a very good pitch for Trump. And so far, Biden's down by 23 points on foreign policy, alienating both sides of the Israel-Palestine argument as well, which is not helping him out. His coalition is extremely unsustainable right now, and that's true. Inflation is out of control. His numbers probably are going to go a bit down on this issue after the new report, but immigration, this is his worst issue of all, consistently minus 30, minus 35, even in some polls higher than that on the issue of immigration. And this is an issue that affects everything and affects every other issue. You talk about our healthcare system, you talk about wages, you talk about the economy, you talk about crime, the border crisis drives it all. Every state is a border state, Every issue is the border issue. And while all the other issues benefit Trump, this is the Trump card right here, the issue of immigration. And you have these smug liberals that are arrogant that say, well, how could somebody living in Michigan or Wisconsin care about the border? Lol. They're actually a couple thousand miles away. Like, do they think these illegal aliens only live in Eagle Pass and Nogales? The answer is no, they don't. And Michigan is offering homeowners $500 per month to house these people. The Detroit Free Press was caught lying about it. They say, no, it's not happening. It's happening. It is happening. They have all these languages, some of which I've never even heard of. Uh, but people are essentially getting paid to do this. It's like the Third Amendment gets thrown out the window, except instead of quartering soldiers or veterans during wartime, it's you get incentivized to uh, quarter these illegal aliens who have no business being in the country, and if we enforce the laws on the books like every other country in the world does, these people would not be in our country. But Biden, apparently, he's just saying, well, you know, Donald Trump wants to round up people and deport them. It's like they shouldn't be here. They shouldn't be here. He wants them to be here because of power. And the American people know that this is a mess and this is a far bigger issue to a lot of people than the issue of abortion. It's a much bigger issue than it was in 2022 as well because a lot of people in Congress, they're not really getting the ball rolling on doing anything about it because it's an executive problem. It's a problem that's directly on Biden's shoulders. And even when it comes down to the Roe v. Wade getting thrown out argument, Biden had a Democrat trifecta, and he did not codify or attempt to codify Roe v. Wade. You could blame the filibuster, whatever. That's not going away. Democrats are not going to be able to codify Roe. So Biden is basically promising people something, promising his base something that he's not even going to be able to do. It's a big mess. He, he's not even getting a leg up on the issue of abortion at this point. That's why he's upset. They wanted Trump to come out with a ban. Didn't exactly happen. Direction of the country. These are always absolutely beautiful when they do load. And here we go. Yeah, 39% underwater in terms of the direction of the country. Just a quarter say the country is on the right track. That is a big mess for Joe Biden, make no mistake about it. Most people, most independents say that the economy is getting worse. The polls show that the issue of abortion is not that high among true independents. Definitely Biden's trying to just spark his base turnout, spark a surge of female turnout. Is it going to work out for him? Well, 2022, it was fresh. And even then, you know, despite Republicans coming out in favor of a 15-week national ban, did it really move the needle? I mean, Republicans still won the generic congressional ballot by, you know, three points or so. So I wouldn't exactly say that it is moving the needle, but every single issue, there's not a single issue Biden is the clear winner on that he's going to be able to energize turnout. They better hope for the BLM resurgence, but even then, people are privy to that narrative being garbage. And part of the reason why Biden 
was able to perform well in 2020 is he had an unsustainable coalition. You had COVID, you had BLM, you had all these crazy things happen. And even then, it was still barely enough. And Donald Trump does have an issue in the fact that his base is lower propensity. He needs to turn them out. It's a good thing that the RNC is starting to build an operation. It's a good thing that Donald Trump is starting to fundraise. He went to Atlanta. He went to Orlando. He's getting $8 million here, $15 million here, $50 million at the Mar-a-Lago thing. Blew Biden out of the water. And he's probably still going to be outspent. But so long as he's competitive and his team spends the resources well, especially down the stretch, he's going to end up being in a very, very good position. And that is the positive thing. But still, you talk about Biden's coalition. Biden got the leg up in 2020 on most issues. He really did. You know, COVID was a big issue. It's out of the picture. That definitely possibly cut Trump's margins among seniors. You saw that. People thought Trump was too lenient, which is ironic because you have people that were in like the pro-DeSantis crowd that said Trump locked down the country. It's the Trump problem. He handed it to Fauci. And honestly, I think there were things Trump could have done differently. But it's funny that these are the same people that talk about electability because if Trump did everything that they have wanted him to do, and the same thing goes for proposing a national abortion ban, it's not going to allow him to assume power, period. But I digress. You also had the riots that happened. It was not Trump supporters rioting. People that were concerned about crime did technically go for Donald Trump, but the issue wasn't really milked that much because when you're in power and things happen that are not good, it doesn't always look good on you in the eyes of a lot of people. People want change. If there are BLM riots that happen under Joe Biden, that's probably going to be enough to hand Donald Trump a guaranteed victory, make no mistake about it. And also, you had the economy in flux, which again, people that voted based on the economy being their issue did vote heavily for Trump. And all the exit polls showed people, despite the COVID economy, it showed they were better off than they were four years ago. But at the end of the day, the margin of people that prioritized the economy was far smaller than it likely would have been without COVID and BLM. So now the economy is not really looking too good for Biden, but there's no other issue looking good for Biden. What is he going to try to do? Rehash one six in democracy? He's the guy that's trying to take people off the ballot. He's trying to take Trump and RFK Jr. and Jill Stein off the ballot. He doesn't care about democracy. He's trying to put his political opponent in prison. He's going to try to make this election about Trump's legal issues. If anything, that's going to be his avenue, but that's all bogus. We know it. When those are talked about, his numbers go up every single time. In fact, the so-called Biden surge started when Trump's bond ended up getting reduced by $300 million. So Donald Trump being in these legal battles is somehow helping him because people understand they're bogus. They're politically motivated. They're politically charged. If people really believed that Trump was guilty, he would not have surged in the polls, not just in the primary, but also the general election when he was getting indicted, arrested, when he got his mug shot. It's something that makes Democrats complacent and laugh. And they're like, oh, he can't win. He's going to prison. And it makes his base energized as they possibly could be. It's something that's a political gift to Donald Trump, and if he manages to get convicted but still stays out of prison in the New York case, that's like the biggest gift that he could get. He gets the best of both worlds on that front, um, but still, Donald Trump is in a good position, and Joe Biden has no direction. His campaign has no direction. You look at how they operate on social media, they are unhinged as it gets, and I don't believe they're really able to milk a single issue. What, decency, democracy? Like, get real. Those are not issues that people care about or they wouldn't really be considering Trump at all. And even if they care about it, actually, they care about, you know, authoritarian regimes, they'd realize that Biden is basically leading one. He's leading one. He is trying to imprison his political opponent. He is trying to dilute, ironically, the democratic pool of our country by importing tens of millions of illegal aliens and then giving them amnesty or trying to give them amnesty. What is that going to do? That is going to dilute the votes of the American people because we didn't ask for this. These people came in illegally, um, and that's the way it is. So 
We'll see what happens, but Donald Trump is playing to win. Joe Biden is in a tough situation, but we got a long way to go, folks. We have a long way to go. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.